So thank you all of you for uh, joining us. And I think it's a long series. It will go for uh, uh, maybe more than a year if we start uh, trying to do one at a fortnight. So you can choose the list. And in case if you want, uh, if you have any recommendation in the coming week, uh, you do this topic, you can write to us. And uh, uh, then we can uh, follow that. But we would like to rotate it. Uh, between ways of working, business acumen, and the power skills. Okay, ways of working, uh, they changed it in term from project management technical skills, uh, primarily to include uh, various uh, aspects like uh, uh, discipline, agile, and uh, uh, predictive, and many other things. So that they are bringing it under WOW, okay, W O W. Power skills. Uh, Earlier, it was called uh, interpersonal and leadership skills. And then business acumen, as you, as the name suggests, uh, strategy, domain, all those things will be related to that. And uh, we participate uh, in these uh, seminars. Uh, in fact, we also intend to uh, do a bit of uh, curative on the videos and then planning to publish it as part of uh, our e-learning so that uh, some people who miss uh, and then towards the end uh, they look for suddenly 20 videos 30 videos so we intend to refer this to them so that uh, they can earn catch up with those videos and then renew the certificate uh, but uh, it is not just for videos we want to make sure that uh, these things add uh, significant value to everyone who participates okay so uh, let's start with uh, uh, a small, uh, trying to put some small case study. Uh, so let me just draw a small picture here. Uh, let's assume, okay, in a city from one location, okay, uh, to another end of the city through the artery road. So you would like to put something like about uh, uh, 30 kilometers, okay, uh, a yeah. rail network, okay, a rapid transit rail network in the form of a metro rail. So this is point A to point B, okay. So this, uh, typically, if you look at it, uh, uh, it will cost, uh, I'm putting a parametric estimate, 30 kilometers into 10 CR, uh, 100 CR, I'm sorry, it will do 3,000 uh, crores, okay? Uh, don't worry about the accuracy of the estimates, uh, okay, just to uh, drive home, okay, the, uh, the meaning of this benefit management. Now, if I put this, and then uh, if I just try to work out uh, something like, uh, let's say 100 rupees, okay, per ticket, and then uh, put train service uh, uh, for every five minutes, okay, between these stations, and then uh, try to see uh, the revenue and the cost and the payback period, okay, it roughly comes to somewhere around uh, 100 plus years. Okay, or rather to be precise, it came to something around 300 years. But uh, if I want to do a little more rework, it may come to 150 or 100 years. So now, obviously, you can't invest on a uh, project with 150 years of uh, uh, payback. Okay, so return on investment will be hardly less than 1% or so. So how do we make this uh, uh, project uh, attractive? How do we make this project attractive? Uh, I just want uh, uh, you all to participate. Everyone can participate, okay, including uh, uh, the Provi audience. Okay, I'll try to put a small mind map as you uh, uh, speak. Okay, the time will be very tight. Uh, I want you people to quickly act. Okay, how to make this project uh, 
uh, attractive to the stakeholders. I'm just opening it. All of you, uh, please unmute and then uh, uh, you can start speaking. Yeah, one option could be to uh, have more passengers travel at an affordable cost. 100 rupees is a ticket, uh, 100 rupees pricing, definitely okay. not attractive. We need to make the ticket price uh, uh, place at a competitive rate and, uh, and see that we increase the uh, occupation ratio. Occupation. Okay, reduce ticket price mm. and increase uh, uh, footfall or okay yeah. occupancy okay then yeah others so can we highlight this service aspect of this entire project and also take into consideration the um, other benefits probably other uh, Benefits, very good. Uh, so I'm opening a heading. Uh, so maybe you can start with one or two and others can add. Okay, so rail trip, this is not just uh, to commute. There are various other benefits uh, which we can attach it to this particular project. Yeah, you start, um, Madam Usha. Yeah, don't what? call me. You can call me Usha. Um, so, how about all of these commercial uh, uh, okay. units that can be sold around these yeah, stations? Commercial in terms of real estate. Mm -hmm. Okay, then commercial in terms of advertisement. Advertisements. Mm -hmm. Okay, then others. It's an interesting exercise. So yeah. Uh, please, whatever crazy stress, ideas also you can put in. May stress more on the passenger comfort uh, for commuting to avoid the okay. traffic. Comfort to passengers. Okay. All right. Maybe air conditioning, uh, etc. Then. It takes, I mean, less, can... it takes lesser time to travel from uh, A okay. to B instead of the road travel. Less commuting time. Yeah. Okay. And it, it goes without saying the safety features built in. Uh, okay. Yeah. It says safety. Okay. Definitely better than two wheeler, four wheeler, yeah. all those things. <laughs> okay. How about the uh, branding for the company that's executing this project? Yeah, branding. All right. Let's go far further. Also, to reduce the timeline, instead of reducing, it is also a good point, price and occupancy, but if you reduce the time from point A to B, it also... Yeah, reduce the commuting time. I already listed uh, Okay, that. sure. Yeah, yeah. Increased comfort, reducing computing time, safety, branding, commercials in terms of real estate, advertisement. More. Okay, uh, just keep thinking. I'm opening one more window here. Okay, so what could be the strategic objectives of this particular project? strategic objectives okay so you need to look from uh, multiple stakeholders perspective okay I, I mean you all are well trained okay look uh, stakeholders from a 360 degree uh, at least i'll put a few more st major stakeholders okay government uh, and then the performing organization uh, and uh, uh, yeah we can add so what could be the Okay, uh, strategic objectives of our, this particular project. Government that, again. Yeah. Traveling public is also one of the important stakeholders. There. Okay. Mm -hmm. Traveling pub public, yeah. I'll put it as public, yeah. Okay, what could be a kind of three or four important strategic objectives of the project? Yes, Usha. Um, if this project is executed well, it, it 
automatically qualifies the organization for other such huge projects okay so for performing organization for it uh, it builds a capability right okay uh, for them to do lot more okay for more projects i guess that becomes their core competency portfolio etc so that is from a performing organization perspective and then others government, i think people are generally happy with i mean like yeah. having this question so for government is a public uh, a mandate okay becomes uh, uh, quite high okay and, uh, and then the, uh, there will be related uh, okay benefits so in terms of other benefits i am adding here competency uh, to the performing organization votes to the government and uh, uh, their okay uh, yeah please others what are the other strategic objectives you are all senior people you can think more okay overall uh, economy of the region okay in terms of uh, employment in terms of uh, more businesses uh, okay to into the city alongside the roads okay. there are so many things uh, okay will uh, come up and from a public perspective well being of the people reduced pollution level uh in the city okay the air quality becomes better uh, petrol comes and the consumption comes down in turn okay it reduces cost of commuting to the people okay so well being of uh, uh society in a urban setting okay what else what else uh, uh, that comes to your mind probably um, you know the project and the region itself getting highlighted on the world map exactly okay so uh, again uh, the economy of the region okay and the visibility uh, in the global road map okay now this comes to even the uh, the industry bodies entrepreneurs and many others it gives uh, more okay yeah we can go to that particular city okay which is uh, uh, which attracts more of uh, uh, the population and uh, many other okay lifestyle uh, there are many things and then housing sector becomes better and uh, so you see that uh, there is a uh, a positive uh, vibe by this project okay so when you look at uh, these things you know uh, the various benefits to the different stakeholders and then you will start coming up okay when it the, the 100 plus years comes up because the investment uh, comes at a cost okay now the government central government uh, start providing funds state government start providing funds and the bank starts providing funds uh, because uh, the asset is going to be a, a kind of a reliable fixed asset with appreciating values and uh, other things so from 100 plus years actually it can brought down to 20 years or sometimes even less than that okay a five fold reduction can be achieved by just elevating our thinking process okay beyond just commuting from point to point okay what else uh, this particular project can bring into uh, the region okay so when you look at it you will see that the fund comes from different sources and then uh, the cost of the fund comes down due to subsidy and uh, various uh, other benefits and the revenue increases because of the various sources okay 
and also it will come various other things okay we are not we don't have time to discuss for example if someone they have a car and then uh, they need to have a onward up to the station they need to travel from the station they need to travel now what what we need to do okay if we want to attract that particular uh, uh, commuters so you need to provide some last mile connectivity so that in turn generate uh, additional okay the economy for uh, maybe the uber or ola or rickshaw or state transport uh, and then parking and then through that uh, there are some revenues uh, so you will see that uh, there are so many things came up just by elevating our thinking okay what are all the combination of different kinds of benefits to different kinds of stakeholders and then how they will come forward to endorse uh, okay to increase the occupancy and to participate in the projects in terms of uh, various uh, other avenues okay so all these things cannot be achieved simply by considering it as a project to commute build an infrastructure to commute from a to b okay you may have to choose the route appropriately place various stations and then see whether to go above go below and then what are the pros and cons okay now as an essence what i am trying to tell here is it should not be just seen as a project okay it should be seen as a a program okay so when we say it as a program okay the definition goes like this it is a set of projects done in a coordinated manner to obtain benefits okay that aligns with the objectives okay now the objectives is not just one organization the objectives of many other stakeholders okay so this okay is not just a project you see that multiple project interdependency benefit orientation and then with an overarching goal so when we talk about uh, a benefit management and benefit realization basically it comes through program and it is ultimately realized as part of operations okay only when you start operating the metro or whatever okay infrastructure capability that you are doing then the benefit start realizing which we saw it can go as much as 100 years okay but you can't start a program with 100 years of uh, uh, payback okay you need to bring it down to probably 20 to 30 years or 25 years afterwards if it gives yes that's bonus but it should get the investments and benefits before within that okay but why we are talking about it as part of project itself okay that is something we need to understand because uh, until maybe about 5 cs 6 years back okay the term benefit itself was not there in pmb okay okay it was uh, there only in program management portfolio management but they realized that uh, many many projects are failing because of okay they are not oriented towards benefit so the pmi introduced okay the benefits as part of the pre project okay that is where okay you under identify the need analysis identify the benefits analyze it justify it through a business case and then get a formal go from the program or portfolio and then the project starts so projects are considered as enablers for benefit delivery okay a benefit delivery and realize session so if the enablers don't uh, enable it the benefit will not come so profit projects can be considered as a success but uh, as a benefit delivery as a overall program it will be a flop okay that's one reason is very recently this has been significantly strengthened by pmi bringing them into 
okay pre project and now as per the new curriculum this is brought into business environment okay uh, uh, identify assess the benefits and value of through the projects okay so this is the the context and uh, now you understand uh, the use case the power of uh, benefits uh, in doing projects and the pro programs now with these few insights uh, let me just take you into uh, the benefit of management and benefit realization and i guess you all have okay your good uh, insights now uh, let me just go into it and then uh, uh, learn a little bit about uh, the concepts of uh, benefit management uh, we are going to talk a few more uh, jargons uh, okay we'll go one by one okay let's look at the start with benefit definition okay now there are different definitions uh, according to different organizations i'm now sticking to uh, pmi uh, because we have a very limited time so benefit is the gains and assets okay being realized by an organization and other stakeholders as a result of outcomes delivered by the program okay so this is the definition of benefit okay you see here gains assets okay that comes uh, to multiple stakeholders as a result of outcome now we don't learn many of these jargons as part of our project management so that is why this is identified as a, a pdu series uh, candidate quite often okay or even the by definition you see that project is a temporary endeavor to create a unique product or service or result okay let's take uh, uh, for a, a quick understanding and discussion product so now i am putting a question to you product uh, okay is an output or outcome or benefit now it is a radio button question so you need to answer most appropriate one it is a classical mbq with one option which is most appropriate not the answer okay we can argue pros and cons but uh, appropriate option okay the product is an output or outcome or benefit output output okay good okay you get one and a half pdu promptly okay so the projects are done to create a unique product which is output okay so definitely the output is an enabler to obtain benefit but uh, we don't achieve the benefit realization when you achieve the output okay you have lot more to do beyond that okay so from output you need to go to outcome from outcome then you need to realize benefit and then you will basically achieve the objectives for which a particular program is started okay all right i guess uh, you all have understood okay project doesn't result in a benefit generally projects results in output so we'll go and try and understand uh, the relationships uh, little more as we go forward okay so we understood what is a benefit and then how benefits are achieved we looked at it okay at the end of uh, uh, the chain okay the benefits are achieved there are different uh, types of benefits uh, okay we can classify them as uh, monetary okay non monetary tangible intangible okay and positive that is benefit and negative that are dis benefits okay there are different ways to classify them and then now uh, the interfaces part will come to that later now here okay though we talked about uh, benefits to multiple stakeholders in a 360 degree view here predominantly i am picking up uh, 
okay two or three group of stakeholders okay programs deliver benefits to the beneficiaries and customers okay so the customer could be let's say a government or private depending upon it the beneficiaries could be okay the commuters public etc okay that's a one of the primary objective of okay de developing and delivering a program the program deliver benefits in terms of business value to the sponsor okay or performing organization we also discussed it before okay they basically get the revenue and they also get an asset in terms of build operate and transfer okay a, a big asset base okay and of course they also get the capability okay so right now itself you see here okay we have seen the sponsoring organization performing organization the customer organization and the ultimate beneficiaries now in between there are lot of uh, vendors uh, contractors okay and many other stakeholders are coming in okay so program delivers benefits to everyone so we need to look from that perspective and then do a detailed analysis we'll come to that point little later the analysis part i'm slowly developing the blueprint for the benefit of all of you now the another dimension of uh, benefit okay is there are certain programs where the benefits are delivered in a incremental fashion okay so it is like this suppose if you have uh, like a forecasted a benefit of 1000 units okay so it goes something like this as a road map okay out of every iteration you get a benefit okay each iteration and then once uh, you achieve the overall desired outcome and benefits you close the program so this may take uh, maybe years two years three years five years so they are called incremental delivery program benefit delivery programs and there is another set of programs where okay you need to upfront invest on project a project b project c project d and then integrate them all together and then go for the next activity to commission test and inspect get certified uh, and then the benefit delivery starts okay up to this point of time zero benefit and then it starts here the investments are growing something like that as an s curve and the benefit delivery starts only from here okay so here it is not like that the investment and the benefit goes together okay so we need to understand that this very very important when you begin a program now since many of you are well trained in project management in terms of uh, multiple uh, development methodologies and life cycles okay probably i would like you to identify one program in this category and one program in this category and then we'll go to what is the life cycle to be followed and what are the challenges that we'll face i want all of you to learn that okay for the first program okay can you give an example incremental delivery program ramana or anyone who have unmuted give one example incremental benefit delivery i think i think i can give for the second one sir okay second one yeah yeah so you need to take the metro rail projects what we are talking about yeah okay i am building a a, a network from point mm. a to point b there will uh. be many stations yeah. but i cannot start say i cannot claim that i can uh, start a the service between intermediate stations very good very so, good and and, okay. the, and the more important point is like you said someone has to testify the safety generally exactly. i have to run the entire line correct so, so integration mm. safety validation yeah. okay and uh, then commissioning is important yeah. so metro and then maybe the industry where you are working okay things like uh, yeah, a drug development yeah. or vaccine development yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Right. Left side. Probably a typical software uh, application implementation where you very do a POC. Good. Very good. Very good. We give you a first okay. release and then the patches. Yeah. Okay. Today's uh, software development in terms of uh, e-commerce platforms or social networks. Uh, mm. So everything goes through incremental. So you decide something like uh, uh, minimum, uh, what is that? Minimum uh, viable product, MVP and MBI. Okay, minimum business increment, minimum viable product. Okay, you do that and then uh, go in increments, take feedback and then work on it and do that. Excellent. Okay, so typically this goes through an agile public hybrid and this also goes through predictive public hybrid okay now both can bring in agile elements okay please uh, remember i'm not saying uh, this will only follow waterfall even in a metro and drug development you can incorporate uh, agile elements and uh, even in this Okay, you may need some predictability. Okay, both are required, but predominantly. Okay, now, what would be the primary challenge in the, the first part, incremental benefit delivery, and what would be the, uh, the challenge in the second part? What is the challenge? Challenge. Challenge means uh, that can basically jeopardize the program benefit delivery and reaching the outcome or etc what could be the challenge here and what could be the challenge here in the first one ah. benefit realization will be late first one is not late you see here after every increment uh, you start okay. realizing the benefit okay oh. for example six sigma programs okay hmm so even in the IT projects, okay, it can be released in uh, increments and then people can start using it and the company can start realizing the revenue. So the benefit comes early here in the first part. Now my question is, what is the risk and what are the challenges? Any one example. So generally, these are, uh, like, like you said, they start off as an MVP uh, deliverables. And probably we wouldn't have covered all of the uh, risks and risk elements, or uh, you know, we, if we miss something in an MVP that's uh, figured out later in the life cycle, we may have to, you know, revamp the entire project, and uh, the costs can get uh, excellent, really excellent. High. Okay, if you do not have a, a foresight uh, in terms of roadmap and the ultimate objectives, then this will start. Uh, a kind of a trial and error rectification. It will go on and on and on and on. So you need to have that foresight where we are heading for. Okay. So you need to have this uh, uh, short-term benefit realization at the same time. What is the long-term roadmap? Okay. The second challenge in these things uh, is uh, sustainability. Okay. So you will see that some of the program developed through right side will stay that the product will stay there for decades. Whereas in the earlier one, by the time you complete the program, what you did in the first, it may become either obsolete or people will discontinue using it. Okay. They will see something else coming up better and then they will switch. Okay. The loyalty will change. Sustenance will be a problem. All those things will be an issue. Okay, now I'm, I'm just putting it for you, okay, so that uh, you, you will think when you choose such programs and projects. But okay, what is the challenge in the second part? What is the challenge? Exactly, uh, the finances. Yeah, very good. Okay, so here you are upfront, you are dumping the entire investment without getting one rupee, okay, back. So the risk is very high. It needs to be evaluated, okay? And uh, the program can fail anytime. For example, during the integration, 
something may come and hit during the verification validation something may come and hit okay so that needs uh, okay lot of uh, uh, careful attention in terms of uh, integration in terms of uh, validation and what are the risks involved uh, what kind of me measures we have in place etc etc and then uh, in terms of finances and other things you need to be very careful so they will even at the end of feasibility okay they will assess are we ready to go into it in terms of finances in terms of risks in terms of uh, various other commitments from various stakeholders okay etc okay good uh, and one we'll more thing is uh, yeah this is a program and uh, there could be so many projects they all need to be performed with a tight coordination yes so there not yes. be any time lapse between one thing and the correct, project correct. and other should be performed in a very coordinated way yeah yeah that's correct the coordination integration okay uh, those things are the critical elements okay so this is an important aspect probably i would say the heart of uh, today's session is this okay so when it comes to the benefit realization okay so we need to begin with uh, the strategic objectives okay quite often in a project okay we start with uh, requirements okay and uh, the requirements uh, you will see somewhere here and you will see that uh, okay the project ends here and ultimately neither this is not achieved this is not achieved this is not achieved okay so this this part is uh, very very important okay so let's let's look at uh, uh, different areas it starts with the strategy and then you put the strategic goals and objectives which is again okay quite often we may if you start writing it okay you will see that uh, naturally comes out is the output okay the output is not the strategic objectives okay the strategic objectives should be the benefit centric okay and the overarching goal or mandate of the organization government etc okay so that should be identified and broken down into the objectives that are benefit centered which are closely aligned to organization or nation and others okay the strategy and from the benefit okay you need to drill down to the initiatives okay the initiatives are nothing but projects okay so we need to basically drive it from the backward okay identify the projects and then what is the corresponding product or service or result that you are expecting out of it and uh, then the sponsor or the performing organization and customer together they need to evaluate the outcome that are being expected out of the particular program so i think this part uh, okay will not uh, get too much into it because that's a big game okay very very high level this is something you all have to understand this is something you all have extensively worked on it as a project okay so the project life cycle development life cycle etc comes only between this okay and then comes output and output to outcome is something i want you to focus on okay so what is the difference between output and outcome what is the difference between output and outcome sir here uh, i will take my experience uh, mm. we are building some facilities for the manufacturing of uh, pharma products or vaccine so mm. all this will be done through uh, i i will build a facility that is the output what i am giving a tangible asset which i am giving to the people but the okay. outcome is it should be built according to the some regulatory uh, norms which could be okay. subject to the audit uh, uh, okay audit. so i'll put it here yeah. okay with a, a validated certified yes 
okay and with respect to the asset and with respect to the people trained training okay and with respect to if you look at uh, some of the other public utility kind of product okay the end user should be uh, uh, some kind of uh, aware and waiting for the launch okay maybe a car or maybe a portal etc okay so you will see here waiting for a particular product launch aware about the features uh, utilities value etc validated okay facility or product or whatever it is certified for safety security etc and all associated people are trained okay to administer uh, support etc now if you look at all of them compared to building the facility okay the challenge involved here if i want to summarize it in one word okay it is called change okay change now if you are spending let's say 3000 crore here okay this part probably may need only 3 to 10 crores okay which is less than 1% of it but that makes or breaks a particular program okay so quite often ribbons are cut inaugurated when you achieve the output okay but we see some of them never achieved the outcome and if the outcome is not achieved zero benefit delivery will be the result and the outcome strength is directly proportional to the quantum of benefits being received by all stakeholders involved okay so between output and outcome okay managing that uh, change in terms of behavior readiness okay uh, the confidence and the enthusiasm there are so many things uh, need to be done okay so you read here the results obtained through the use of uh, okay that th this is not a very okay what you have done with the output okay how you okay align it with the various stakeholders probably okay that could be the one but what we explained it here is uh, a much more vivid aspects okay so if you look at it all of them are very soft there is nothing related to big infrastructure or a complex uh, even technology related aspects somebody have to come and test and validate okay because everything is already built in somebody has to certify some people have to be trained some support system to be established some okay the marketing buzz and uh, this needs to be created in the uh, marketplace okay so all these things uh, involves uh, significant amount of uh, change management and adoption that are required once that is done basically when you kick start the operations and you will see that the benefit will start flowing now which you can see in many of the programs for example if you look at uh, hyderabad metro versus chennai metro okay now even now i understand it is only maybe 10 20% occupancy okay it has long years to start getting back the money okay but when it comes to hyderabad metro with we reached a good peak of uh, footfall and thing long ago okay but because, but for covid it would have been a roaring success by now and uh, so that's the thing uh, they managed this uh, output to outcome better than probably there there could be many reasons okay there it is an underground metro bus network is good uh, there are so many other reasons but again as we did uh, this uh, brainstorming at the beginning okay so you need to look from a, a benefit centric perspective in order to achieve that benefit what are all the enablers in terms of outputs the initiatives and we need to put in place now that will actually attract only an incremental investment but that incremental investment will have a, a tremendous impact on benefit realization okay only the perspective should change 
from a strategy to objectives uh, and benefits and then to initiatives and then to output and then uh, realization of uh, output outcome benefits and value ultimately you will see that the strategy is well met through the program so any any questions uh, around this sir here i have an observation ah. so the uh, the whatever the points you have mentioned here uh, uh, the training the certification and all those things hmm. so whenever we are trying to create an output hmm. so all these points are well taken care of so that we follow those processes which can be validated very easily at a later stage it mm -hmm. is not that we go again certain designs or the, it includes everything uh, what are the norms specified by so and so regulator authority so we have a very good quality assurance team they will ensure that we all uh, these points are well taken care of while building mm -hmm. the facility itself so that we now not have any uh, and the validation also be done at various stages before it is offered to any alter alter uh, uh, Coming yeah. and alting the system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll give one other side of it, Ramana. Uh, you are talking about uh, 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 private, corporate, uh, let's say, pharmaceutical development program. Okay, wherein it is very clear in terms of strategy, objectives, roadmap, etc., and it is you follow an established process route. Yes. So things are all okay, well set. Uh, think about uh, a foundation embarking mm. on a program, the same pharmaceutical healthcare side. Okay, you will see they don't have any clear in terms of okay how to reach this. Yes. Okay. So quite often, uh, I we are working with certain foundations. We see that uh, the outcome hardly achieved, and the benefits. Really yeah, and, and the bigger point is, um, you know, it's a softer benefit that causes the biggest impact, the intended stakeholder and audience acceptance. Mm -hmm. So you might, you might have several checkpoints and you have, uh, uh, you know, like you just quoted the uh, Chennai Metro Rail and uh, um, Hyderabad Metro Rail. So how the end user takes it, I mean, we are not interacting with them. We are not taking their opinion. Exactly, madam. Right. Exactly. But when yeah. it's actually given, put out, put it put out there for them to use, that's when you know uh, how well you have succeeded, right? So very, very well said, actually. Yeah. Okay. So and we can take the same example of this, you know, digital uh, money transactions. How many people were initially ready to uh, do that phone pay and Google Pay? Mm -hmm. There were a lot of trust issues. I mean, big actors had to be paid big amounts to advertise that. Correct. And correct. now every street vendor has a exactly exactly Google Pay, right? So yeah, so that <laughs> that aspect usually is missed at the program. Uh, um, implementation or the design level because we don't have that level of access to the end user we are mm. assuming a lot of things in that aspect correct 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 yeah yeah that's true and uh, you would have seen this uh, uh, sometime no see building an e-commerce portal and then going live is uh, even a msme company can do mm. that yeah but yeah. Uh, but you see only amazons and flipkarts are able to see it because uh, they are able to create that uh, change adoption better than a small scale uh, service provider and all. So right. they pay a lot of attention on this output to outcome, outcome to benefit and value. And they make upfront uh, huge investments on that side rather than uh, building a great products. Right. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. So let's keep moving. Uh, I'll now move to a benefit management life cycle. Okay, so it, it is not just incidental. Okay, so now we started with, uh, for example, strategy to objectives, objective to initiatives, and then to outputs and all. So the benefit itself, okay, you need to think from that angle. Uh, in the beginning of the talk, we identified at least uh, eight to 10 benefits out of a, a metro program in a short span of five to 10 minutes. Imagine if you do a, a benefit mapping workshop for two full days and then translate them into objectives, uh, uh, 
uh, initiatives, outcomes, outputs. Uh, okay, you will see program management is the most attractive okay, profession in the world. Okay, so it goes like this, uh, identify the benefits. In fact, we did it uh, in the beginning. And then we need to go further deep dive into, okay, in terms of analysis, okay, who is the stakeholder who is being benefited out of it and uh, are there uh, any disbenefits associated to, with it to some stakeholders, what kind of behavioral and other changes that are required, what are the enablers to get this benefit. So it needs a, a detailed analysis and then a planning to realize those benefits out of which you get the initiatives okay now you will see that for example the how do i attract uh, the people who are hold having cars and bikes into the metro okay so they shouldn't mind hey, it's two kilometers how do i go to my nearest metro station okay should i again pick up a bus and all so you find out some way, you create a good parking lot, integrate it with a ticket and make it free of cost. Okay, so that needs an initiative to build either last mile connectivity, working with another vendor or building some infrastructure, etc. Okay, and then basically the third is the heart of it to delivery phase. Here you start uh, kind of uh, triggering projects one by one, one by one, one by one. So that is where the multiple projects are being started. Okay. So in, initially you create the roadmap, identify the projects in together, build the overall program, perform the cost benefit. Okay. Get the approval for all of them, etc. And then you prioritize. Okay. Whether you do it on a Agile mode or predictive mode or hybrid mode. So in this phase, all the projects are started, implemented, uh, integrated and closed. And depending upon the type of benefit realization, we discussed incremental benefit delivery as well as the all benefits start at once. Okay, based on that, uh, at the end, you will see the completion of this phase. And uh, if it is uh, like a infrastructure program, then basically the huge operation starts. Okay, if it is other kind of program, the, in the midst of operation, you basically do this program and the other component projects. So it involves a benefit transition and uh, many, many programs fail because of the sustainment plan and the journey is not thought about. Okay, again, you can relate it to many of the the governmental and NGO projects and programs. With some passion, they will build, but it will be a, a short-lived project or program. Okay, so transition, the change management, adoption to be thought about, and then sustenance over the entire 20 year or 10 year or five year up to that, uh, the product life cycle, okay, to be thought about it and entire framework should be part of the program okay and then it should move on to operations so this life cycle okay by itself involves multiple deliverables so here you identify the benefit uh, register okay once you identify and then uh, analysis and planning will result in a benefit realization plan and then as part of uh, this plan and the register you will identify the benefit metrics, threshold, target, okay, all those things related uh, things will be identified. And then here the, the plan basically being implemented, the benefits are being realized. So you report, you monitor, all those things coming up here. And then you need to have a transition. So you need to have a benefit transition plan. And then in the say, Way you transition the benefits to the respective stakeholders. Okay, the transition plan, it is not just one benefit you are transitioning. There are multiple benefits. We talked about it. Each benefit should be transitioned to the respective stakeholder. Okay, we need to think big. And then there should be a sustainment plan to be developed by the program organization. 
and then this plant need to be transitioned to the operation okay basically the sustainment plan will be implemented by the uh, the operational function or the recipient function but the plan should be prepared okay the budget should be year marked and then you need to give it so that uh, they keep sustaining the product okay so that actually makes the benefit management by itself a domain okay so we talk about uh, project management program management uh, business analytics uh, etc as respective domains now you will see okay future there is a certified benefit management professional coming up okay the change management is significantly involved in that okay so all these things form part of a, a big cycle a set of deliverables and that needs to be fully aligned with your program management plan the master plan road map and the respective project plan whatever activities to be done and the project managers needs to be informed about the big picture okay so then the project managers know what is the intention for which the project is uh, uh, triggered and then how it uh, results in ultimate uh, benefits to the various stakeholders okay so that is the the life cycle perspective of benefit anybody have any questions on this so uh, sir i just wanted to understand when we talk about benefit sustainment mm. it may go for many years beyond the product uh, whatever we are developing yes so are we going to plan for 20 30 years 50 years good good question very good question first of all this benefit sustainment is going to be ensured by the recipient organization okay it could be the same organization operational function or different organization or government depending upon the program so it is the responsibility of the program to prepare the benefit sustainment plan and the associated budgets risks involved etc etc hand it over to the other organization and this plan can have a window okay so the window could be maybe three year window or five year window or annual window for that they need to project and then give it and then subsequently it goes in a kind of rolling wave mode okay because uh, the as you rightly said the benefit will be realized over a period of 10 years 20 years 30 years okay so operational plan will subsequently take over allocate budgets and other things will continue so you need to define a window and for that window you develop the plan and hand it over to them make sense thank you okay okay Sir, so uh, yeah this benefit matrix how do we define them uh, okay good question uh let's let's take a couple of benefits and then uh, define a metric okay we will we started with uh, rail okay uh, that's a very very important point uh, uh, ramana in what you asked okay so in the rail network what we thought about what are the key metrics benefit metrics the is, one is the time time in which the project will be delivered very good very good uh, the okay. budgetary cost so when we talk about uh, yeah. okay it is going to reduce your uh, uh, commuting time significantly okay now basically you need to undertake a survey initially as is condition how different people are how much time is spending they are spending people let's say come from let's say dilshik nagar to high tech city how many people are coming in how many modes how much time they are spending okay and you come up with the metric and then if you are good the to be scenario with the metro okay so what are the the three modes of travel home to station station to here and then the end point to the office what is that okay and then evaluate what is the time then you will see that the survey is one project you need to undertake initially and at the end second okay the initial pick up and drop how it are going to do that could be a project last minute okay from there to office how you are going to give 
and what is the commuting time so probably you may reduce it from let's say uh, 90 to 120 minutes to probably 45 to 90 minutes or uh, 60 to 90 minutes something like that okay at least you can say 50% of the commuting yeah. time we are reducing. You can indicate in percentage. percentage yeah, exactly. Time. Exactly. Okay. So, that is a metric. Then, think about uh, the pollution level. Okay. Before that, uh, what is the... Uh, air the quality index. We can air take. quality index. Yeah. Now, what you are attempting in order to achieve that uh, desired outcome. Okay. What are the measures to be put? How do you communicate it to the audience? Okay, so that needs a lot of effort. Okay, the cost. What is the average petrol cost somebody yeah. is doing? Okay, now all these things can be used as a aware in the awareness program and the promotions and other things. Okay, so you will see that the program becomes a lot more attractive and many people are willing to put their investments into it. Okay, now again we talked about advertisement, real estate, etc., etc., so those things are the benefit metrics. Thanks for asking that question. Okay. You, the moment you identify the metric, you are going to see what is the uh, baseline value, what is the target value, and how do I establish, how do I demonstrate it? Okay. So that trigger many, many other actions, deliverables, and work packages. Okay. Uh, the next few slides, I'm not going to the... Uh, details, uh, okay, you will see for each phase what are the key activities and outputs, okay, it's not really required, uh, you can read it out later, uh, the analysis and planning, okay, what is the output and what are the activities defining the KPIs, performance baseline we discussed, and what are the components that will realize those specific ones that will ultimately become projects for your programs, and then that this is the snapshot of uh, benefit realization plan. Uh, what are the subheadings, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. This is the heart where okay you initiate project and then uh, transition okay the output are integrated into the program, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so and then record the progress and the benefit measurements, etc., will come up here. So it's a place where major investments are made, projects are done, integrated, um, hectic activity will happen here, okay? But uh, here, this is very, very important uh, preparatory phase uh, where, okay, the planning and other things are done. The transition, okay, the verifying, transitioning, okay, that demands a plan and uh, the recipient accepts it, etc. And the sustainment, uh, what are the activities to be done? all that stuff are to be put in place, okay? Uh, so that actually uh, brings only one topic which we put it in the objectives, okay? I have not added it because I added it in a different mode, okay? So I'll just construct it here. There is something called a log frame which is not actually defined by uh, the PM box, but there are a few other models they define it, okay? So the log frame, in a uh, abbreviation, it is called a logical framework. Okay, logical framework, which actually comprises of four layers. Okay, the first layer is uh, activities. Okay, we discussed it. I'm just putting it in a matrix B diagram. The second layer is output. Okay, the third layer is uh, outcome. And the fourth layer is uh, goal okay so you need to basically uh, define describe okay the primary activity is done in that okay so it involves description what are the major activities what are the major deliverables and what is the outcome and what is the overarching goal and then you need to define what is the kpi for each of them Okay, so activities, how are you going to measure? Okay, output, how are you going to measure? Outcome, how are you going to measure? And the third thing, okay, how we are going to measure? This is the metric, this is the measurement and validation, how we are going to do. 
plus maybe you can put threshold all those things but last but not the least what is the assumption okay assumptions that you are making while defining this framework okay so if i do this for example if i do this activity i'll get this output if i get this output and then make necessary change i achieve these outcomes if i achieve this outcome then i get the benefits and reach the goal okay so what are all the major ifs and buts you need to do that that needs to be subjected to risk analysis and then make sure that it is robust okay in many of the uh, ngo especially international funding programs okay this is the criteria for funding okay if this is not well defined and established you won't get uh, any funding the logical framework is part of defining the program and the project okay to define it now this will lead to the detailed plan later okay but uh, this is most important now there are few more insights here the measurability of the program decreases as you go up okay activity easiest to measure outputs yes but if it is a service delivery output uh, need to be defined properly if it is something a project results in a results output to be properly defined outcome you need to think a lot okay as an organization you may not be even having a, a bandwidth to deliver outcome okay you need government support local body support etc and then ultimate goal may be the government's goal so if you do something if they do if you don't have an endorsement okay from those stakeholders okay your project or program will be fail but tomorrow you will be promptly blamed okay they did not do the job properly so it's a very very important one the measurability will decrease and defining kpi becomes very difficult and measuring and demonstrating becomes also difficult so building a logical framework is not a, a very easy but even for other okay big projects and programs uh, in a corporate sector also you can define this logical framework okay which is an important uh, uh, backbone for a, a program with the benefit centricity okay that's good i think i have only 15 more minutes uh, time well spent well participated uh, are there any questions okay otherwise actually i just uh, uh, brought some three four questions as a quiz and uh, sir, yeah yes uh, so when are you going to send the recommendations to pmi to include this logical framework in their upcoming <laughs> editions <laughs> this uh, by virtue of uh, participating in the other uh, models uh, uh, this to be very useful yeah. because this gives a lot of clarity to all the stakeholders that's right that's, that's right. right and also uh -huh. if you look at the other models this is done at a very beginning stage the identification and definition stage itself it is done yeah correct whereas we talk about so much things in the uh, pma pinbox standard or in the planning i'm not uh, trying to demean or uh, other standards but uh, what i'm trying to say is the benefits of having this logical framework should be included in the pinbox editions yeah. as soon as possible so that it will be <laughs> beneficial to all the project managers actually so, if you look at it mm -hmm. uh, we look at this picture no the this picture okay so this picture may look very theoretical okay yes and uh, how do we translate it into a implementable okay a plan or concept paper becomes little difficult uh, for which uh, this is a good solution okay if you look at it all that we discussed are here you need to probably tailor it by additional a few additions but otherwise uh, that circle is well implemented here in this okay in terms of the four layers and the four columns okay uh good uh, uh so thanks a lot okay i don't want to take you more time it's uh, uh let's start with uh, this three uh, quizzes and then i will leave it to uh, our team to fill the feedback and then now uh, asking additional questions and uh, general discussions okay all right the first question uh which of the following is in right sequence 
okay think about it and then show up uh, your hand i should have basically done a, a kahoot quiz but that will actually take more time 10 to 15 minutes uh, next time we'll try to do that which of the following is in the right sequence okay somebody answered it b b comes up d comes up you can put it in the uh, don't uh, i mean you can put it in the chat i'm watching it someone says c i get uh, d more b also there i think except a everything is there <laughs> d c b d d i'm little concerned because last minute i put up this question i should not go wrong So the, the B is in bold. So, <laughs> which one? I <laughs> no, no, and I didn't mean anything. <laughs> okay, let me count. One, two, three, four, four Ds. One, two, three. I think three Bs. Okay, C two. Okay, B to three. I think more most of you have answered it. Let's go and do a look at it. Activity, okay, is right. Okay, so that means D is wrong. Okay. All right. Yeah, the last one should be the. Then, then if the you idea. perform activities, then you get the outcome. Uh, sorry, output. So this qualifies, this qualifies. Okay, this shot down. Activities cannot directly result in outcome. So A is shot down. And then output results in outcome. So this qualifies. And uh, this also qualifies activities output outcome. Outcome results in benefit. Outcome do not directly reaches the objectives. So benefits, once you realize benefit, then objective is reached. Sir, so I have a question. Uh, yeah. Uh, so so uh, when you actually in the slide, it's in a circular you know, uh, uh -huh. image. Correct. But here, see, uh, I think without an objective, okay, how can you even start an activity? Yes. So I, that's why I showed Exactly. Me. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Yes, I sir. Like, yes, sir. I like for, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so, for me also, that is the thing. That is yeah. the thing I also thought. Because without objective, yeah. we cannot do the activities. So, uh, as per activities, output B is current. But when I saw this objective, that is why it came to D. That's so okay. without objective, we cannot wait start. A minute, wait a that minute, is wait a minute. From objectives, will you jump into activities? No, no. Objective should result in initiatives and then output and then outcome and then benefit. Suppose if I go in that area. So Objective cannot result in activity. No, this is topmost. This is bottommost. You got it. Okay. So the lesson is, okay, either this way or this way. That is the sequence. Okay. You can start from objective, and then what are the benefits that you will realize to achieve the objective? And in order to attain the benefit, what should be the outcome? that we are anticipating to get that outcome what are the various enablers in order to get that enablers what are the various activities so this is conceptualizing okay initial conceptualizing having conceptualized this is implementation 
because without performing activity you will not get the output without getting the output you will not get the outcome so you yeah, think this way act this way so the best way to depict is a circle probably <laughs> <laughs> you should, you, should uh, you know reword the objective as objective achieved i mean like which makes it um, okay, you know, okay. more evident yeah, that yeah. that is yeah. the so, end of in the any way my question is the right sequence okay when i say right. sequence all the components are involved it is not no, cisgrass yes. cisgrass okay very good but uh, it's a good so it is not for the mark it is for the discussion so yes. this discussion benefited i all. agree <laughs> you made us think actually so which is that's the objective <laughs> <laughs> so we reached the outcome and we got the benefits yes. <laughs> okay uh, next question B D B C E. I'm not sure whether it is for the second question or the first question. Uh, I, I don't know how to differentiate that. I think after that, you can people can start. After which one? I just mentioned second question. After that. uh huh after all the answers after that uh, correct 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 i am not uh, discussing yeah okay somebody said that, to be very good nishi started like that okay so others also can put uh, two and then you put the answer even if you have put before okay i'll start i'll consider nishi as the first uh, response lakshmi you didn't put uh, second oh okay you put only second question Yes. B B D B. Okay, people are uh, converging towards D and B. Okay, yeah, almost D is slightly more than B. Okay, let's look at uh, between D and D. Okay, projects are planned in detail to deliver product or service or result. Very good. Programs are complete when deliverables are delivered and integrated. now the deliverables are part of the product project project and integration also can be part of the project at another project so all projects are completed integrated but where is outcome where is benefit if that is not there it is a failure now let's evaluate projects are focused on tasks and output delivery while program focus on changes and benefit realization now tell me which is better b or d d d that's right uh, sorry it is d wonderful wonderful okay yeah there is a b is okay but it is not sufficient okay d is necessary and sufficient so d is better okay the b not fully come the out out outcome exactly <laughs> exactly okay so b is there almost 80% but 80% uh, uh, is not sufficient you don't reach the destination <laughs> okay i guess this is the last question and also few more seconds to go program benefit management follows a set of stages the life cycle which of the following is not an identified stage in program benefit management it's very simple probably it should take only 30 seconds 3c okay others 3c okay 3d Three C, three D, C. 
It goes very tight. C D comes very alternatively. C D C D C D. C D. Okay. For want of time, let's uh, uh, close the poll. Okay. Let me go back and show you the. Like, you remember so, seeing all bees are there. <laughs> okay. Identification. Okay. Analysis, delivery, is there. Okay. delivery transition, oh. sustainment. Okay. Now the monitoring metrics are identified here and it is monitored here. And here it is verified and accepted. And here it is the transition. Okay. All these things. So monitoring cannot be pegged to a a specific case, okay, it happens over a period of time. Okay, so this is not a case. Good. Okay, there is a, another model, Ramana is aware of it. Uh, in project management and program management, they identify this as something called meal, meal phase. Okay, so meal represents monitoring, evaluation, accountability and learning, okay? Now, all these things should go through across the life cycle. For example, if you have a life cycle with, uh, let's say four phases, okay? This meal should come like this. Okay, it covers the complete life cycle. Every activity to be monitored, stages to be evaluated, and then, uh, accountability to be identified and then uh, learning also is not at the end all through. So this is a, a circular task that covers all. Okay, That's where this comes up, monitoring. Okay. So thank you very much and over to Ratna. Yes, sir. All right. So uh, thank you all for staying here for this uh, uh, wonderful topic. So I'm I'm very sure that all of you would have learned so much about the benefit realization. So I'm going to post the feedback form link in the chat. I want all of you to take a minute to fill it up and submit to us. So we will process your certificate based on this. Yeah, so you'll get the PDU certificate based on the uh, feedback submitted. And so please don't get dropped. And that's the only way we measure that you spent one and a half hours. Okay. Uh, so please uh, do that and uh, uh, give your suggestions. Uh, next time, uh, refer to uh, your friends. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, make use of it. These are free PDUs. Uh, that gets accrued. As soon as you go back, you register your PDUs. Uh, so you will see how you earned the pattern of your earning. And if you follow us very regularly, uh, 20 PDUs in needs only six uh, or 10, yeah, 10, 10, 10 to 12 sessions. So within one year, you can easily earn that 20 PDUs. So you don't really need to do anything. And by the whole three year cycle, you will cover all the uh, talent triangle uh, topics. So you will fully comply to the PMI requirements. And not just for PMP, it can be used for all 